There is a companion who's called Abu Lubaba. Abu Lubaba, L-U-B-A-B-A. -A. I'm not going to go much into Sira now. But put simply, the Battle of the Trench, Rasul Sallallahu entrusted Ben Uqurayda, a group of Jewish community, to protect the backside of the Medina. And the front will be, cover, will be dug with the trench, so that when the mushriks come, they encounter the trench. And from the back, they are covered by Abu Ben Uqurayda. Now, Ben Uqurayda betrayed that and allowed some mushriks to leak in and about to attack the women from the back, children from the back, in order to penetrate into the Muslims in the front. That is blatant uh, betrayal, right? Okay. The Prophet saw, of course, Ben Uqurayda knew that they betrayed the Prophet, so they hidden themselves in the fortress. And for 25 days, they were besieged by the Prophet. No food, no drink, nothing comes. No. When, the, when the food finished, they want to negotiate. They want to, they want to enter into peace uh, negotiations. So they said to the Prophet, uh, send us one of your companions to negotiate with us. Send Abu Lubaba. Abu Lubaba is one of our former allies in the past. Send him, we want to negotiate with him. Rasulullah sent Abu Lubaba, said, Wait, go and negotiate with them. And try to persuade them to get out of the fortress. It's not going to work. Abu Lubaba entered. The moment Abu Lubaba entered into the fort, he encountered all the children, all the women crying, Abu Lubaba, Abu Lubaba, we are going, what do, you, what do you suggest? Look at the children, they haven't eaten, they haven't drunk. What do we do? Tell us, what do, you, we, do we do? He said, I advise that you need to get out of the fort immediately. Otherwise, it's going to be like this. And that's all what he did. Otherwise, and for those who are recording, or he simply moved his hand across his neck, symbolizing that it's going to be death. It's going to be slaughter. Now, this is something that Abu Lubaba should not have said or done, because this is considered among the secrets of the state. And he was not given the permission to go and tell those what will happen to them. He was going there to negotiate and to persuade. And Abu Lubaba immediately realized what he did. So what did he do immediately? Went outside of the fortress, didn't speak to no one. And incidentally, for your information, there was no Muslim with him. And no one actually could, if they had the Sony recorders, record anything because he used hand gestures only. And thirdly, it could have been also misinterpreted for whatever reason. It could have been anything other than murder, killing, yet that did not all play into his consciousness. He went out and he decided, I made a mistake. He went to the mosque and tied himself to one of the pillars of the mosque. Actually, this pillar is known today in Medina, Masjid al-Nabawi, as Istawanat al-Tawbah, the pillar of Tawbah. I'm not saying when you commit a sin, buy a ticket to go to Medina, tie you. No, I'm just saying it. This is... And he tied himself. He said, by Allah, I will not untie myself until Allah reveals a verse. Look at this ambition. Allah reveals a verse to tell me that he accepted my repentance. He tied himself, brothers and sisters, i'tikaf, as if it were, for six continuous days. Rasulullah of course, he would go and inside the mosque and pray, and, and he would see Abu Lubaba tying himself. Of course, he would untie himself to go and pray. Sometimes he would untie himself through his wife, would come and untie him to go to the bathroom or to go and eat. And incidentally, during the morning, he's always fasting, doing, trying to do his utmost to repent. 
So first procedure, I'm going to tie myself. Second procedure, I'm going to fast. Third procedure, I'm going to do enforced, imposed, self-imposed, solitary confinement, i'tikaf, call it if you want, since it's in Masjid al-Nabawi. But this is all until Allah reveals a verse that he has accepted my repentance. Our Rasul Sallallahu when he heard the news, he said, if Abu Lubaba came to me and asked that I ask Allah for forgiveness, I would have done it for him. No problems. Although this is a security breach, he has disclosed important state security information. But since he has decided not to do so and not to approach me, then I can't do anything. It's now a matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one day, Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, in the household of the Prophet, close to the mosque, here is Rasulullah Sallallahu laughing. Look at how Rasulullah Sallallahu used to relate with the Qur'an, to the Qur'an and respond to the Qur'an. So, why, ya, why ya Rasulullah you are laughing? He said, just now a verse was revealed on me. Allah has, لَقَدْ تِيبَ عَلَىٰ أَبُوْ لُبَابَ Allah has accepted Abu Lubaba's repentance. And the, the verse, by the way, we know it all. وَآخَرُونَ uh, اَعْتَرَفُوا بِذُنُوبِهِمْ خَلَطُوا عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَآخَرَ سَيِّئًا عَسَى اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ And there are others who have acknowledged their sins. They have mixed a deed that was righteous with another that was evil. Allah will turn to them for forgiveness. Um Salama was so happy, she said, Ya Rasulullah, shall I tell Abu Lubaba? Our Rasulullah tell, tells her, go and tell him. And she tells him, Abu Lubaba. Verses just were revealed and the Prophet was laughing. Now we can untie you. He said, no, until the Prophet himself with his pure hand unties me. He had to wait, unfortunately, until Fajr time when the Prophet came to the mosque to untie him. But he was untied. But what's the point? The point is, brothers and sisters, when he left Banu Quraidah, he decided never ever to go back to Abu Qurayla, Banu Qurayla, never ever, number one. Number two, when he went from the fortress, he didn't even go to his household, kiss his children, say goodbye, I might not see you for the foreseeable future. Number three, he never cared about his image. Do you know what he was doing? Do you know what he was doing? He was scandalizing himself in the community. He was in the front page of the tabloids, putting himself in an istuana. That is until today, 21st century, known as Istuwala Tawba, for a sin that Abu Lubaba committed. He could have quietly went to the Prophet, you, me, anyone, anyone would have gone to today. Today people say, oh, peer, this is the peer here. He's dead. This is, no, but he listens to hear, he hears me. You go and make dua for him to give you a child, to uh, make uh, your wife or your husband love you more. This is a live prophet, and his dua is mustajab. Yet Abu Lubaba tries to establish a direct link between him and Allah, irrespective of his image in front of the community, and despite the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was there, and if he approached him, as the Prophet said, the Prophet would forgive him. But you see different calculations, because we are talking about Sahaba and different levels of response to the companions. I tell you, brothers and sisters, do not delay tawbah. Do not delay tawbah. And I'm not saying do not delay tawbah, uh, just talking about uh, sexual activities or smoking or drugs or even human relations. If you are in bad terms with your brothers, do not speak to them. Go and speak to them now. We have now mobiles and blackberries. Send them a text message. Um, uh, mothers, fathers, husbands, wives. So you don't have to do like Abu Lubaba, tie yourself in a mosque. But the idea was spontaneity, immediacy, urgency, irrespective of how would you look in front of the community.